The people here are more chill, they're more friendly, the food is better. It never really took off that much until I started streaming GeoGuessr and then... Good evening, how are you? Good evening, I'm good, how are you? I'm doing as well as well. I did not say your username or the name you're using on Twitch. Mm. How do I pronounce it? Sachi? Yes, Sachi. Sachi. Okay, Sachi. Where, where is that coming from? It's a Japanese name. It's a name that I named my dog. <laughs> yeah, so same like same as Toro, his his username is based off of his dog, his Shiba Inu. Actually, mine is also based off my Shiba Inu. <laughs> That's funny. And yeah. I don't know if you know the internet meme. It's It's one from the 90s where it shows a dog in front of a computer. And the caption says, on the internet, anyone can be a dog or something like this. Basically, that on the internet, you never know who you're dealing with. And it mm. could be actually a dog. So it's actually funny that on the internet, you've chosen the, the name of your dog. Right. I think that, I think that represents me as well. <laughs> so you've given it away a little bit, although it's also written in the profile of your uh, Twitch profile. And that is mm. you live in Japan. Mm -hmm, correct. But you don't yeah. read Japanese. No offense. No, I don't. Well, <laughs> you have no, really, a, I don't. <laughs> you have a perfect uh, American accent. Uh, well, mm, you give correct. it away also on your profile. It's too easy for me because uh, sometimes I usually don't, don't want to offend people by saying, hey, you don't look like something which, you know, in these days can be sometimes a bit offensive. And I don't want to be uh, too presumptuous in assuming mm. things. But in your case, you, you do write that you're from originally Southern California. So I'm not doxing anything, right? When I'm saying this. No, no, no. I'm from San Diego. <laughs> San Diego. But when San Diego, did you yeah. When did you move to Japan? Um, about four to five years ago. I'm bad with time, so I, I don't exactly know, but around five years ago. What made you move to Japan? Um, as a kid, I used to travel here a lot with my mom. She works for an airline, so we could travel basically for free. And we would always just decide to go to Japan, and I really, I really liked it. So I decided I wanted to live here in the future. Before moving here, I had traveled here like 12 times. <laughs> oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Do you have a particular preference for any parts of Japan? Osaka. Osaka. Osaka why why Osaka in particular? I've traveled to Tokyo a bunch and I just, the vibe here is different. People here are more chill. They're more friendly. The food is better. I think everything's better in Osaka. <laughs> it, there's, it's, there's less uh, crowds as well. It's mainly about the people, I think. Yeah, most people I talk to who travel to Japan, they always tell me that they wish they had more time in Osaka because they actually liked Osaka better than Tokyo. Interesting. I rem mm. I did a, an extensive trip to Japan, but I actually preferred Kyoto. I found it more, maybe it's not, it doesn't have enough of a big city vibe for you because I mm. think Osaka has that. Uh, but I felt Kyoto was more tranquil, more calm and much, very interesting also and very easy to walk around and cycle around. What about Kyoto yeah. or other smaller cities? Yeah, I like Kyoto. Um, one, if I didn't live in Osaka, I think I would want to live in Hiroshima because it kind of reminds me of San Diego. It's like a big city, but it's also also like you kind of need a car to get around. In Osaka, you don't need a car, but I kind of like getting around by car. So it's like big city mixed with like country vibes kind of i heard i'm not an expert at all but i heard in the way you pronounce kyoto it, it sounded like with a japanese accent do you do you kyoto. speak jap do you speak <laughs> fluent japanese yeah i mean i went to language school for two years in japan or in the u.s in in japan i can read i can write my i can speak as well but i like my daily conversation isn't the best like i can get by i can get by in most places like the bank or the post office but if it's like a very like local accent kind of conversation i'm not so good with that i can't really express myself in the language i guess are you trying to get better at it or what's your target or objective around this or it's just to get by with with simple conversations at the moment i'm not really working towards it i mean i try to use japanese like as much as i can obviously i only use it when i go outside but i'm when i'm at home i'm really only using english i would like to go to school again i remember trying to learn just enough japanese on my first trip 16 years ago the same one because i was so desperate to buy a dslr camera that mm -hmm. you know, japan being the home of the 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 cameras i thought hey i'm going to negotiate or at least ask for the price but then i forgot one thing is that 
yeah, sure, I can ask, but I'm not going to understand the answer. And I completely forgot and neglected this aspect. <laughs> so, I, so I could say, I think it was, Ikura desu ka? I think. Mm. How much is it? I think, if yeah. I remember correctly. But then I, I never right. understood the answer on the phone. So yeah. it didn't help. <laughs> you mentioned you speak English <laughs> every day. And on your profile, you also mentioned, see, I did my homework, that you are an <laughs> English teacher in Japan. I, I am. Do you want to tell us I more am. about that? Do you teach adults, children? I used to teach both. I've stopped teaching adults. I don't enjoy it as much as I like teaching kids because with kids, you can have more fun with it. You can play games. Like it, it's just more enjoyable. With adults, they take it a little bit more seriously. They're asking me all kinds of questions. And so now I only work with kids. The ages are like、uh, three years old, and my oldest is like about 14. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I like it a lot. I've been, I've been doing it for like two, three years now. Oh, so it's not the first thing you've done when you moved to Japan, right? You said you moved four or five years ago, and then you, you started doing this three years ago. Yeah, I went to school and I, I, I didn't really have a job during that time, and then I started working. And did the COVID affect your work? It did for like a month or two. We were doing online only lessons,、uh-huh. um, which was not bad. The lessons still continued. We just we were either online or we were at the class like with masks on. And now that you live in Japan, what's your perception of the US or the rest of the world? I don't want to move back to America, <laughs> to be honest. Why, why I, so? I just feel incredibly comfortable here. I feel very safe here. I used to live in San Francisco as well, and I was constantly looking behind my back. I wasn't always comfortable, but in, I mean, of course, there's bad things that happen in Japan, but I just feel generally more safe here and like more free in that aspect. Would you yeah, move to another know- country where you, you would have that sense of freedom? Possibly, possibly. I, I like Japan at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't, you didn't sound convinced about going somewhere else. I would struggle being in the US where you really need a car to do anything. Yes, you absolutely need a car. Pretty much in any city you live in in America, you, you're going to need a car. And I don't, I don't really like that. It's, it's really nice to be able to sit on a train and it's dead quiet and you're just looking at the view. It's really nice. Do you feel integrated in Japan? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. I, I feel like if I was, if I could express myself more in, in Japanese, I would be a little better off. But in terms of like daily life and food and situations like that, I, I'm, I'm pretty okay. <laughs> Does your Japanese help you when you play j o g e s a when you have a Japanese round? Ah,、uh, or... it does. It does. <laughs> I can, <laughs> yeah, I can. Yeah, if, it, if it's readable, then I, I can most likely recognize the prefecture name. But I know there's GeoGuessr players who have all the prefectures memorized without knowing Japanese, so it's not that special. <laughs> it's not fair, right? You bother to、yeah. learn the characters. And you, anyway, but you must be among the, the top players when it comes to Japan, right? Like a huge advantage、no. in being able to read it. <laughs> no, my region guessing is very bad in Japan. And well, I'm just, I'm not a studier. Like, I don't study GeoGuessr. If I did and I learned the, the plates on the poles and I learned that kind of thing, then I would be better. But I just, I just don't really study the game that hard. Are you、so. better off、uh, guessing within the US than Japan? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, very, I'm, I'm pretty bad at both, to be honest. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm better off guessing in. Con- like countries I'm not familiar with whatsoever. <laughs> You're not allowed to choose like my- Monaco or Luxembourg. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like,、uh, I, I, I'm better off in like, a country like Brazil than I am in、oh, America,、really? to be、okay. honest. Yeah. What are some tips about Brazil? What are you looking at when it comes to Brazil? <laughs> mm, the trees. The trees, maybe、uh, a phone code or two if I, if I remember correctly. The hills, the dirt. <laughs> What prompted you to start playing g e o g e s s a in the first place? You started、uh, streaming almost two years ago, but、mm-hmm. wh- what prompted you in the first place to play g e o g e s s a Like everybody else, I started off watching g e o w i z a r d Oh my God, everyone's the <laughs>、<Yeah> . same. <laughs>、mm-hmm. <laughs> I watched his videos playing the game and I knew about the game. I just didn't, I didn't play it, but I was interested in watching his videos.、Um, I had played it before, just like very casually. 
probably Googled or two <laughs> back in the day. I didn't know how to play the game. So um, yeah, but GeoWizard. And then uh, during COVID, I was just bored one day and I was like, I was thinking like, oh, GeoGuessr is a thing. And I just found out what Twitch was and I was only watching Fortnite streams at the time, but I was thinking like, oh, do people stream GeoGuessr? And I went and the first person I see is Dan. And I click on Dan stream and he's playing um, Aussie golfer. He's playing um, Jack Guesser. I'm like, whoa, what is this? Like, this is so cool. And then it, it really got me into it after watching Dan. So I, I owe my, I almost owe my geo career to Dan. <laughs> he, he also helped me out like setting up uh, streaming it and stuff. Like he uh, kind of explained what it is and how to download it. Like eh. I basically, um, modeled my me starting to stream geoguessr after dan he was my role model <laughs> nice nice i had the chance the privilege to interview dan a few weeks ago a great guy very friendly yes uh yeah i watched that one <laughs> the uh so since then you started streaming you have more than two thousand followers on your stream now mm -hmm. how's that experience Oh, it's wild, honestly. <laughs> How so? It's... Describe, elaborate on wild. Well, I started off streaming Fortnite for like a little under a year and it, it, it never really took off that much until I started streaming GeoGuessr and then more people started coming in and then my stream started building more and then I actually felt like I, I was a streamer. <laughs> what do you attribute this to the fact that with Fortnite it didn't take off because you you could assume that with Fortnite being more popular, less less niche than GeoGuessr, you'd have more potential people viewing your stream. How do you what do you attribute this to? Well with Fortnite there's hundreds and thousands of people streaming it at one time. So if I'm streaming it with five viewers, I'm way at the bottom. So no one no one's gonna really find my stream. But with, with GeoGuessr, sometimes there's only thirty people or there's only thirty viewers or something watching it, so it's it's more easy to find my stream and click on it with only 10 people streaming the game. Has uh, your experience been as a woman play streaming? Is it no different than what you'd have expected or did you get any troubles or, you know, there's sometimes been issues with harassment of women uh, when they're playing? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's happened. Okay. But, How yeah. do you cope with it? <laughs> Oh, I just keep going. I just tell them piss off and keep okay. going. <laughs> All right. It doesn't affect me too much. All right. Good. <laughs> what surprised you the most whilst playing GeoGuessr? Is there any map or country or something that surprised you or still surprises you when you play? And you stream quite a bit, by the way, right? I, I noticed your schedule is, I think, almost yeah. every day, right? Almost. Oh, uh, right now I'm on break, so I've been streaming every day. But yeah, I try to stream at least three times a week. Nice. For about three hours. Nice. Mm. What what surprises you the most? Is there anything that still surprises you when you play? Vibe guessing, I guess, can be surprising. Like I just have like a very strong vibe for something, and I like I I don't know like gens. Like I don't really know like too much meta. I know the obvious ones, but like sometimes my vibe guesses are like I know the road. <laughs> so that, that always surprises me. <laughs> Is there a specific game mode or a country that you'd be keen to know better? For game mode, I just prefer chat guesser. That's really the only time that I play duo guessers when I'm streaming it or when I'm in someone else's stream playing chat guesser. A country that I would like to get better at, just like Central Europe, I guess, telling the difference between like rule Czechia and Slovakia and stuff like that. I'm not <laughs> the best at. It would help if I knew gens. I know obvious gens, but like the very specific gen three, gen twos, I, I don't really, I don't really know. Have you seen any map or image that made you want to go and visit that country or that specific region? Like Croatia looks very nice. Like on the coast, I, I like these are countries that I wasn't really familiar, familiar with before playing this game. So like all those like uh, Balkan countries look look nice uh, and like i uh i'm more interested in traveling to like the countryside of uh of countries now i guess like i don't have much interest in going to the main cities and seeing 
the main stuff, like seeing the countryside is more exciting to me now. Why is that? Is because you live in a city or you've lived in cities? Yeah, I, I guess so. And just seeing a lot of it on the game, to be honest, it's like, so it's, it's, it can be more, it can be prettier than the, uh, the, the big city in the country. What's your target when it comes to playing Jigesa and or streaming? Do you have a specific objective in mind? Or is it just to have fun and you just, or a way to pass time? For now, just a way to pass time. I don't, I don't see, I mean, I would like my stream. It would be cool for my stream to grow bigger, but the size it's at right now, I'm, I'm pretty happy with. Do you have any other hobbies that you enjoy unrelated to Jigesa? I like to drink beer. <laughs> beer is a hobby. <laughs> Drinking beer, trying beer, I don't know, going out to local restaurants and trying different food. Do they have different types of beers in Japan? I do not drink alcohol and I know nothing about it. Oh, okay. Uh, so do I, I have to ask you this question. Do you have, a, do you have enough of a variety in Japan? Yeah, there are. You can get a bunch of different countries beer here. The ones that I've been really interested in trying lately is uh, beers from Belgium. They just have a really different taste to them. So that's been fun trying them. I, I often try them on stream. Oh, interesting. The only thing I know about Belgian beer is I think there's this small monastery in Belgium, which is producing this very unique beer, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if you heard about this. There's been an entire story around it where they have to limit the number of purchases people can make because they're just producing such a small volume of beer. I don't, I don't know the name at all. Have you oh. heard of this? No? I have not. No. I have not. Okay. Well. I would like to get my hands on that. <laughs> <laughs> this very unique beer. Is there anything you'd like to see in terms of how the game could evolve? Or maybe the community? I guess for the website itself, the I like it would be cool if they did a little something more with like kind of like a like a battle pass type thing. Like you level up and maybe you unlock some different thing for your character. Because right now they just have like a pretty basic character that you can use. So if you could like unlock cool hats or something with the characters, I, I think that'd be cool. In the gaming industry, you call the skins, right? Where you can skin, customize, yeah. right? Okay, yes. got it. Well, I know I know that you guess the team is occasionally watching these interviews. Yeah. What about the community? Any thoughts around the community? of? Because you mentioned uh, Aussie golfer, Dan. Mm. How's the interaction with the, the, the overall community? Anything you'd like to see in terms of evolution of it, if anything? I mean, it's quite small. It would be cool if it got bigger. But in, yeah, in terms of the community, like everyone has been very welcoming and everything. So what would you say to someone who's just getting started and just doesn't feel they can add anything or it's just too big of a hurdle to get started mm. i guess if you want to get started playing geoguessr just find a streamer that you like uh, there's there's plenty of streamers out there who are really very willing to help you play the game and help you with metas and everything like that like dan's uh tuesdays he's always has some good tips and stuff um i've the community is quite like welcoming I I never had a problem with it when I uh when I first started out. Yeah, I don't I don't really post. I mean, I I was posting on YouTube, but I I don't really content create too much. I just pretty much hit lot go live and yeah, that's <laughs> that's as far as I go. Today, I'm going to ask you to choose <clears throat> between a series of interview questions. I'm going to give you the the title I gave to that set. So, okay. one of them is um, if I were dot dot dot, another one is going to be the rubbish interview, which is the one that I gave to Dan. Okay. Uh, he the one he chose. You have Judgment Day. Uh, neither yes nor no, and beliefs. Beliefs. <laughs> you want to do beliefs? I guess All right. so. <laughs> that's that's a tricky one, but oh, again. Is it? Well, a tricky one. Uh, not really. It depends uh, to what extent you're comfortable sharing things, at least for one or two questions, but don't worry. Are you ready for this interview, Sachi? Ready. Question number one. Do you believe in God? I do not. Number two. Do you believe in the horoscope? I overall don't, but I, I kind of joke around with it that I think Scorpios are the best. <laughs> are, you Scorp I, are you Scorpio? Are you Scorpio? I am. <laughs> I, I'm not talking about myself, though. I just okay. tend to get along with other Scorpios. All right. All right. That's fair. Number three. Do you believe in aliens? 
I mean, my dad has said that he saw a UFO and I believe him, <laughs> but uh, I do, I do. Number four, do you believe in ghosts? I do. Nice. Never seen one, but I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Question number five, do you believe in the weather forecast? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the weather doesn't affect me that much, so I just, it's whatever. Whatever happens, right? You don't yeah. care. And do you believe in not walking under a ladder? If I'm not mistaken, it's that's just uh, a superstition, right? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> For superstitious reasons or just because you're worried it could actually fall? Uh, just because I grew up with my mom believing in that kind of thing and I okay. wasn't... She, yeah, like like uh, opening an umbrella indoors. I I won't do that. Oh, really? I don't know about this yeah. one. Is that a super superstition? Yeah, it is. Okay. Just, yeah, people do it. I see people do it in Japan all the time. Um, and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, whoa, that's so... You can't do that. <laughs> but then you told me you don't care about the weather forecast. Is it supposed to bring rain or something? It's just unlucky. It's oh, just unlucky. unlucky. Thing. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you have a problem also with the number 13? Oh, that's actually my lucky number. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> all right. Interesting. All right. Question number seven. And I think it's particularly appropriate for an American. Do you believe that 9-11 did not happen? I believed it happened. Okay. Question number eight. Do you believe in the death penalty? I, well, I guess it depends on the sentence. I, I guess this is a on yes the sentence or, no or the question. crime. You mean depends on the, the crime. crime. The crime. Yeah. yeah, it depends on the crime. I guess both Japan and the U.S. right have oh the U.S. depends on the state, but in Japan there is a death penalty, right? They're like some people there are is. hung. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they have a really unique way of doing it, actually. Do you want to but describe yeah. it? Yeah, it's like a. There's three. I don't know if other countries do this, but this is the first time I've heard it. There's three officers and there's three buttons in front of them, and one of the bus button will trigger like the, the firing basically, and they all press it at the same time, so they don't know actually who triggered. If you have a final take on it, do you believe in the death penalty? No obligation to answer if you're. It depends. Eh, I'll pass then. You'll pass. All right, I'll that's pass. fair. <clears throat> Question number nine, which is slightly connected. Do you believe in redem redemption? I'll pass on that one too. Okay. Do you believe in happiness? Number 10. Mm, yes. Okay, good. Do you believe, that's the final question. Do you believe in being able to become the world number one at Jogesa without moving, panning, nor zooming? <laughs> do I believe that I could do it? In general, do you think someone can be number one oh. without panning, zooming, oh, and absolutely. moving? Oh, Yes? Oh, yes. yes really? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, good. Yeah. Well, you've succeeded with the beliefs <laughs> interview. Well done. Very nice. Got some interesting answers here. <laughs> any final like few words? Good. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> playing along. Sachi, any final few words you'd like to share with the wider community who may be watching this? Stop second guessing yourself. Just go with your gut. <laughs> Trust your instinct a little bit more. Yes. All right. Yes. Well, thank you very much for your time and thank you for your insights. <laughs> thank you.